All right, let's now shift our attention to Lebanon, where anti-government protesters have returned to the streets after a three-month pause that was triggered by a nationwide lockdown. Now, hundreds of protesters flooded the Martyr Square in central Beirut, leading to violent clashes with the security forces. The tear gas and rubber bullets were used to disperse the demonstrators who were protesting the collapse of the country's economy. Protesters hurled stones at the security forces, torched vehicles and then ransacked shops to send their message across for economic reforms. They're demanding jobs, medical care, the right to education and other basic human rights. The protests first erupted back in October 2019 and led to a new government under Prime Minister Hassan Diab. But many feel that the new government has been equally inept in handling the crisis. them have been hospitalized according to the Lebanese Red Cross. Some protesters were seen wearing masks to protect themselves from the COVID-19 infection. The pandemic has in fact exposed the inefficiency of Lebanon's health system. Clashes also broke out between opponents and supporters of Hezbollah, which holds considerable clout in the country. The Hezbollah is the only group to have retained their weapons despite the end of the civil war back in the year 1990. Protesters feel that only the state must have the authority to stockpile weapons. At one point, the security forces had to make a human chain to separate the pro and anti Hezbollah factions. Lebanon's economy has also taken a bit of a turn for the worse in the last few months. But the Lebanese currency has lost almost about half of its value and banks have started to refuse the dollar withdrawals. More than 35% of the population presently is unemployed in the country and 45% are said to be below the poverty line. The country's debt has also soared to almost about 170% of the GDP and the government is currently negotiating with the International Monetary Fund for billions of dollars in terms of aid. Meanwhile, thousands of Israelis rallied in Israel's Tel Aviv against the government's plans to annex parts of occupied West Bank. Demonstrations were seen waving Israeli and Palestinian flags and also holding up placards which said Palestinian lives matter. The protest was originally forbidden by the police due to fears of the coronavirus but was later given the green signal. That we have done so much damage to each other, the Palestinians and the, the Jews in Israel. We are brothers, we belong here, both of us, and we can do so much more together than separately. Now, US President Donald Trump's controversial Middle East peace plan, as he had put it out, allows Israel to annex Jewish settlements and other strategic territories in the West Bank. In a recent agreement to form a coalition government with Benny Gantz, Prime Minister Netanyahu will be submitting the Middle East plan to the parliament soon for possible endorsement. The plan envisions the creation of a Palestinian state, but on a much reduced territory and without meeting with a key Palestinian demand for having its capital in Jerusalem. Palestinians have rejected this plan outright. <laughs> 